This is Malika Hook from the University of Colorado with another session of one slide in five minutes. The topic today is phacoantigenic glaucoma. Lens-induced glaucoma can be subdivided into distinct categories that include phacolytic glaucoma, lens particle glaucoma, and phacoantigenic glaucoma. I will cover phacoantigenic glaucoma in this session of one slide in five minutes, and the other two categories will be covered in subsequent lectures. Phacoantigenic glaucoma is a granulomatous inflammation resulting from sensitization to lens proteins post cataract surgery or trauma. The previously used descriptor was phacoanaphylaxis. However, this term is no longer used since the disease process is not an allergic response. Occurrence is now uncommon, less than 1% of cataract surgeries. After introduction of modern phacoemulsification techniques, which enhance removal of most or all lens material at the time of cataract surgery. The immune response usually occurs within two weeks of surgery or trauma and involves an immune complex reaction mediated by IgG and the complement system. The following two criteria must be satisfied before definitively accepting a diagnosis of phacoantigenic glaucoma. Number one, polymorphonuclear leukocytes must be present in the aqueous or vitreous specimen. And number two, circulating lens proteins or particle content of the aqueous humor must be insufficient by itself to explain the glaucoma. Sending aqueous taps for analysis to identify polymorphonuclear leukocytes is not common, and the diagnosis is often not definitively made prior to interventions being instituted. From an examination standpoint, mild to severe conjunctival hyperemia is usually present, coupled with a decrease in visual acuity compared to early postoperative values. Slit lip exam reveals keratic precipitates with low-grade inflammation with or without vitritis, and often with anterior and or posterior synechia. Gonioscopy may reveal lens material in the angle. However, the lens material may reside posterior to the iris and in the sulcus, making ultrasound biomicroscopy helpful in the workup process. Intraocular pressure may be initially low due to inflammation inducing decreased aqueous humor production, but this is often followed with elevation in IOP and accompanying corneal edema. Fortunately, glaucomatous optic neuropathy is not common, and proper identification with addressing the retained lens material will often lead to resolution of the pathology. There is some evidence that this disease process is more common when lens material is intermixed with vitreous, allowing for slow release of lens proteins over time. Differential diagnosis, careful history, and sit lamp examination will help direct the diagnosis, and this is especially the case when recent cataract surgery has been performed and retained lens fragments are identified. Lens particle glaucoma, which involves direct obstruction of the outflow material with retained lens fragments, is marked by a larger volume of lens material and the lack of polymorphonuclear cells in the aqueous humor and will be covered in a subsequent lecture. Neovascular glaucoma, uveitic glaucoma, and phacolytic glaucoma may in part mimic the disease process of phacoantigenic glaucoma, but as stated, each can be ruled out with proper history and examination. From a treatment standpoint, phacoantigenic glaucoma is treated with topical therapy to lower intraocular pressure, as well as steroids to control inflammation. While it is possible for the disease process to resolve with topical therapy alone, removal of the lens protein, when significant, will both speed up recovery as well as result in definitive treatment. Myotics like pilocarpine should be avoided as they might increase inflammation and formation of synechia. Cycloplegics like atropine can be used to assist enhancing ocular comfort, breaking posterior synechia, and or to avoid formation of new synechia while other treatments are initiated to control pressure and inflammation. The surgical treatment involves anterior chamber washout with removal of any bulk lens material once it is localized in the anterior chamber. A pars plana approach is needed for material in the anterior or posterior vitreous, and a partial vitrectomy is often done to remove any microscopic lens material that surrounds larger particles. Every patient should undergo dilated fundus examination with optic nerve assessment at baseline. Visual field testing can set a baseline for presence or absence of optic neuropathy, and extended follow-up when possible should be instituted to ensure recovery and addressing any future needs of the patient. For an extended transcript of this lecture, see keogt.com, and you can find this lecture as well as others on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you for your time.